According to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin, and he said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in today's Gospel, Jesus reminds his questioners that if they are so worried about paying taxes to the state, they should be much more concerned and careful about their service to God and their obligations to him as Creator and Lord. We fulfill our duties to our country by loyally obeying the just laws of the state and working for the welfare of all the citizens. We become heavenly citizens by obeying God's law. We need to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. It is the duty of Christians, as citizens of our country, to pay taxes, to pay for the services and the privileges that the governments provide, like our paved roads, our police and fire departments, our schools and other necessities. If we refuse to pay taxes, How will these needs be met? Another way of giving to Caesar what is Caesar's is to actively participate in the running of the government by voting for and electing the most appropriate candidates. Third, we must submit to the civil authorities and respect respect the just laws of our country in order to live in peace. As loyal citizens, we must also see to it that our elected representatives are faithful in maintaining law and order in the country in promoting the welfare of all of its citizens without violating God's law. So you might think it's a good time to speak on political things, like our upcoming elections or the political and civil unrest in our country. So this morning, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. We as a community and a country need to pray. Last week in his homily, Father Mo spoke about getting down on our knees and praying. We need to pray long and hard for the right people to be elected. We need to pray that calm falls upon our land. Now, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for or what party to align ourselves with. I'm asking all of us to give to God through prayer, fasting, and asking for the intercession of the Blessed Mother, the patroness of our country. We need to give to God what is God's. Since everything is His, we need to give ourselves to Him 100%, not just 10% on Sundays. We should be generously fulfilling our Sunday obligation, and we should find time every day for prayer and worship in our family, for the reading of scriptures, and the proper training of our children in faith and morals. Our contributions to our church should be an expression of our gratitude towards God, giving back to God all that he has given us. We need to be active in the various ministries of our parish, 
It is an offering to God of our time and talents, which is another way of giving God his due, our whole self. The common theme in today's readings is the nature of our obligations to God and to country. The readings show us that with God's help, we can be ideal citizens of both earth and heaven. Perhaps we can illustrate all this through the example of St. Thomas More, an English martyr who was counsel to King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII was married to Catherine and seeking a male heir, he was also attracted to another woman, Anne. Henry appealed to Rome to have his marriage to Catherine annulled, but Rome refused. Henry then took matters into his own hands and declared himself head of the Church of England, and he married Anne. He then ordered his friends and officials to sign a document that they all agreed that he acted rightly in this matter. Many signed, but Thomas More refused. Henry demanded that he sign or face trial, arrest, and execution by the state. Thomas More refused. He knew he had two obligations, one to God and one to his country. When they conflicted, St. Thomas More knew that he had no choice to remain faithful to his obligation to God. On his way to his public execution, he encouraged the people to remain steadfast in their faith. His last recorded words were, I die the king's good servant, but God's first. Today's gospel reminds us of our dual citizenship. We are citizens of the world and citizens of the heaven. We have an alliance, an allegiance, an obligation to each. We hope the obligations will never clash. But if they do, we must resolve them, as Thomas More did, without compromise to God or to our conscience. The Roman coin that was handed to Jesus was stamped with the image of Caesar. The human heart, which God created, is stamped with the image of God. We are made in the image and likeness of him. Do we serve God or we serve Caesar? What should we do? What must I do be authentic, to be authentic and live the life that God has called us to do? We belong to God, whole and entire. This is why when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He answered, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, in all your strength. He's not talking about 10% or even 50. He said all. We deserve to give God 100%. So what is due to God? Everything. Since everything comes from Him, we ought to give everything back to Him. That is justice, plain and simple. So we can ask ourselves this morning, am I ready and willing to give God everything? When Jesus demands of the Pharisees that they give to God what belongs to him, he is also asking us the very same question. We ought to ask ourselves if we have given everything to him. I would like to leave you with a verse from Philippians 3.20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to live in our world, but we don't have to live by our often misguided worldly standards. We are called to something greater. God doesn't want our taxes. He doesn't need our vote. He does not need you to take up arms in his defense. But God does deserve our heart and our conscience and our love. These should never be given to a human institution or even a human relationship. Our greatest love, our greatest loyalty belongs to God. Alleluia, resurrexit sicut Dio.
Oh, no, 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 no,